Hello, Christine Marie here, the period empress, and I am happy to welcome you to another peacemaker phase specific yoga class. In this class, very similar to the energy that we're using in soldier phase, we're going to do more Hatha poses and we're going to use vinyasa flow a lot more than we would if we were doing a queen phase specific yoga class or a reflective phase specific yoga class. And in case you don't know my lingo, I use embodied language to refer to the four menstrual phases. So another way you could understand it is that we are doing a yoga class that is focused on the time when our body switches from follicular to ovulation to luteal phase. And we're going to harness that energy and channel it through yoga poses without taxing our body and forcing our body to do things that don't go with where it's physiologically oriented. Yeah? Working out and doing yoga, especially in alignment with what's happening in your body is super, super helpful to it. And it helps it helps create trust between the physical body and the three other bodies that are programming the physical body, which is the intuitive, the emotional coming from the left, and the mental coming from the right. So let's get started. We're going to do 10 to 15 minutes of yoga so that those of us who are trying to make a habit of daily yoga, so that you can have a, a an idea of a complete series of poses. And then for those of you who want to stay in the breath, in the practice, and dig into what's starting to uncover, you can stay for the full time. And of course, the full time is for our members in the collective. So let's get started. Today, we're going to start in the center of our mat. And we're going to always, in case you ever get lost and I don't cue it, every time we expand our body in some way, that's going to always be on an inhale. And anytime we contract our body in some way, that's going to be on an exhale. And our goal is to keep the breath steady. So sometimes I'll cue it. But if your breath is slower or faster than mine, then you're welcome to take as many breaths in between. But if you ever get lost, you can always get back on track by following that basic rule, expansion, inhale, contraction, exhale, okay? And to embody that, we're gonna start with some very basic movements. Inhale, letting the arms flow to either side of the body, rooting through two feet. They're standing parallel to each other and they're hitting on three points. Two points make the top of our triangle and our heels make the third point where we are touching into the ground. If you want to feel and emphasize that moment, you might raise your toes so that you are having to push through the balls of your feet. Pushing through the balls of your feet and pushing that heel establishes the three points of the triangle that I would love for you to always try to find in every pose when you are po when you are balancing on your feet on your whole foot so that you know where to push down against the earth so that the earth can from below support your full body through those same points every action has an equal and opposite reaction and that is true of the earth as well so inhaling we're going to bring our arms up overhead either side and let them meet overhead in prayer exhaling we're going to let the arms come back down to either side inhale we're going to bring the arms up and overhead and this time we're going to take a steeple grip where we're going to push through the body rooting to rise and we're never going to let our arms get fully straight and we're going to make sure that our shoulder tips stay pinned into towards our core. They're rooting towards our core. And another way to think about it is keeping the distance between our ears and our shoulder tips, always keeping that distance separated. And that is going to protect 
your shoulders in all of your poses. Everything I say in cue applies to your other poses as well. There are no exceptions in yoga. It is about consistency. And we're gonna make sure that the palms of our hand are together, again, to protect our shoulders. You'll notice that I'm really big on technical, technicalities and protection and preventative action. So we're rooting through the ground. We're rooting, we're pushing through the ground and that push against the ground allows us to soar and push and point our fingers towards the sky. This traction of the entire body is not for the faint of heart. And so I hope that your breath is supporting this moment. If you have ujjayi breathing in your practice, now is a great time to pick it up. Inhaling, letting the belly expand. Exhaling, letting the belly contract towards the spine. Inhaling one more time and reaching through those fingertips, through that steeple grip. Exhaling. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just take a side, we're going to take a side half moon pose. So, excuse me, crescent? We're gonna take, yes, I, I um, really have trouble with names. So we're going to root to rise, and then we're gonna root up and push down through the body, rooting up, pushing down. And now we're going to point the tips of our fingers towards our right side of our mat pointing and as we're pointing we're going to let our whole body fold over to the right rooting through our lower body so that it allows space to stretch our right side body without collapsing so we're not going to go like this we're going to as if we were pushed through two between two panes of glass we're going to want to feel that kind of pressing from either side of our body. Inhale, stretching, reaching, exhale, relaxing into that stretch. Inhale, stretching, reaching, exhale, relaxing into that stretch. And then inhale, rooting to rise. Bringing the steeple back to center, exhale. Inhale, we're gonna change our grip. If you're right thumb was on top, switch your left thumb to be on top and switch the rest of the grip accordingly. If your left thumb was on top, do the same, rooting through the body, pushing into the sky with those pointed fingers, pinning your shoulder tips down into towards your core, keeping that distance between your ears. Inhale, Inhale, bend over the, towards the left side. Inhale, stretching, stretching, stretching. Exhale. Inhale, stretching, stretching, stretching. Exhale. You'll notice that the sides are not the same. That's okay. They're not expected to be. What does matter is your alignment. Feeling like you're being pressed between two panes of glass and you're not bending over or bending backwards, make sure that you are really centered as you one last exhale, relaxing into that side bend and inhale back to center, exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, pressing your hands into your shins so that your body can reach a flat back. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, rooting to rise, hands come up overhead. Exhale, hands to prayer. And now we're just simply going to jump our feet apart and we're going to bring our hands on our hips and we're gonna inhale and we're gonna exhale and invert forward. 
And now I'd like you to grab the backs of your heels and feel what it feels like for every part of your body to be connected. If you have it in your practice, you're welcome to widen your stance. The wider you make it, the closer your head will be to the ground and the easier this pose will become if you are focusing on getting contact between the crown of your head and the floor. Getting the crown of your head and the floor, getting them in contact is not part of your practice, then it does not matter how close together or how far apart your legs are. But I do expect everybody to watch these videos more than once. And as you deepen your practice, I would love for you to try to feel that feeling of every part of your body connected to itself and to the earth through your crown. Breathing through it all. Breathing, breathing. Keeping those shoulders pinned towards your core, keeping the distance between your ears and your shoulders. One more time, inhale, belly expanding, exhale, belly contracting. And now we're going to remove our hands, our fingertips from the backs of our heels, and we're gonna walk our body, walk, 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 to our right side so that our body is parallel and almost laying on our right leg. We're going to grab our right heel outside foot with our left palm and feel what it feels like to feel that stretch in our quads. Let's walk it over, walk, 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 to the, do the same thing with our left leg. You can rest your head in the nook of your elbow if you, if your head is able to rest there. Otherwise, most important thing is that you keep your shoulders away from your ears. Now let's walk back to center. Push two hands against the ground. Inhale, exhale. Put your hands on your hips. Inhale, bring the whole body so that the spine is back to erect again. Exhale. And now we're going to bring our heels together so that they point towards each other and dun 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 da you're ready for sun god and moon goddess poses. So you can bring your, leave your feet apart or you can bring them as close together as you want. But before we get into sun, hands facing out and moon, hands facing in, we're first going to just really deepen and dig into this lovely area, our root chakra, family, foundation, community. Let's bring the right foot, the right heel, over, up and over the right toes, and then bring it down, lower it down. Bring the left heel up and over the toes, pushing into the balls of your feet as much as you can, and then bring it down. Let's do it again on the right side and on the left side. You're always welcome to deepen that bend as much as you need to, as long as you're able to also do this part. Now we're going to let both heels rise, and they may not go up as high as they did when you were lifting one at a time, but that's how we know where we're going, but we don't have to go to the same place every time. Lower them down, lift them up, 
and then lower them down. Sometimes we might sickle our foot where, uh, let me see if I can demonstrate it. We might go like this with our foot when we are lifting it up through. Try to keep the heels rising up and over the toes. When you think of it like that, it becomes easier to do and you're more likely not to sickle your foot. Rising one more time up and bringing the heels down. Staying in this squat, in this goddess squat, we're now going to honor the moon goddess by bringing our hands and letting them face each other, the palms of the hand face each other, and let's bend deeper, 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 and then pushing into the ground, starfish, and let all of yourself expand. And now as we take our next bend, let's open the palms to face out, honoring the sun, the masculine energy, feeling the difference in that choice, and then rising, bringing the legs towards straight, never locked, starfish one more time moon goddess honoring the feminine feeling the energy of the palms facing each other and rising to starfish never locking the legs and exhale bringing the legs to bend again into sun god feeling that energy pulsing out of us and rising to starfish. Bring the hands back on the hips and let the feet, the toes point towards each other and then away and then bring the heels to point towards each other. And now bring two palms together to double check. Make sure that you are at least hip width apart, which is the size of your two fists together between your feet. If you are, you're ready to take yogi squat. Let's go down, down, down into yogi squat and bring our hands to prayer. And here I want you to focus on lifting, being in a position where you can lift out. You know, going like that should be possible. If it's not, you might be sinking in and that's not doing anything for anyone. And we're just going to take one breath here. Three breaths, three breaths. And then let's bring our hands and we're gonna push them into the ground and we're going to bring our butt into the air. But we're not going to bring our legs all the way straight because we're gonna go for crow pose. To do crow pose, you're going to keep your gaze about hmm, one and a half feet in front of you on the ground. And then you're going to climb up. So you'll bring your feet up just like you did when we were getting, before we did sun and moon goddess pose, and you're gonna tuck your knees into your armpits, just above the top, just below the shoulder tips, and bring the weight forward. The key here is to think about keeping your butt in the air and leaning as much weight as you can onto those arms, keeping the idea of climbing into the armpits going and you'll lift one foot off the ground and then the next foot and now your hands become your feet they are your point of contact they are what you're pushing through and the earth is supporting you one more breath inhale exhale shift back and now you can continue climbing bringing your legs all the way to almost straight. Wedge your toes, so pivot on the heels to bring your toes so that they face each other. Pivot on your toes to bring the heels so that they come beside each other. Pivot on your heels to bring your toes so that they are parallel. And let's take a forward fold, inhale. Exhale, rolling up through the spine. This is not reverse swan dive. 
Rolling up through the spine. This time, exception, bring your shoulder tips up, up, up beside your ears as you roll up your head. And then a giant, luscious shrug as you roll the shoulders back and let the rest of the body open. And for those of you who came to cultivate your daily practice, your practice is now complete. I invite you to bring your body down in the gentlest way possible to Shavasana and to hold Shavasana for two to three minutes before you move into the rest of your day. For everybody else, we're going to continue with some balancing poses. So let's begin. <laughs> 